see me find them on Rodeo Drive? Um, mm -hmm. I got the idea last spring when Phil and I were in Spain without the kids. Now that sounds like heaven. Oh, Spain. <laughs> Fabulous. No, I mean getting away from the kids. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> uh, May I have your attention, please? Oh, oh, well, hello, finally. <laughs> Still suffering from terminal lateness, McKenna. Ah, uh, come on, you wouldn't know me if I was on time. <laughs> Amen, Katie. <laughs> Shouldn't that be our person? Uh, here, here. Uh, mm. Well, the annual meeting of the Fearless Five might as well come to order. Come to order. This group, I should live so long. <laughs> okay, hold it, gang. We can't start without Betty. Maybe she isn't coming. You know, she didn't show up last year either. What's with Betty? Bit early for the change, wouldn't you think? <laughs> Tell you what, I'll give her a call. I'll be right back. Well, hurry. I'm starved. In a minute, I'm gonna eat anything that isn't nailed down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you would. <laughs> uh, listen, we're waiting for you. You know, the rest of the five. We're at the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, that was today. Betty, are you sure you're okay? Uh-huh. Oh, really? Well, it won't be the same without you. you. Oh, sure, love. I understand. Yeah. Right. Okay, bye-bye. Katie McKenna. Uh, I can't see you now. Hey, we missed you at the luncheon. Tell you the truth, I'm a little worried about you. I'm okay. Katie, uh, please go away. I'll call you, okay? Hey, come on, Bets. Don't try and con old Katie here. Come on, let me in. Or I'll have to come in through the window. and pick you up at Studio House. The rest of us were green with envy. He was so decent, successful, fun-loving. He was. He was, Katie. He was wonderful. Of course, the guys after the rest of us were all El Slezo. Or if they were halfway attractive, they were already married. It was a long time ago. God, I was innocent. You? What about the rest of us? You remember the time when Susan almost got us arrested for participating in a peace demonstration? <laughs> Do you remember Maxine? Thought that the National Guard was there to march in our parade. <laughs> oh. Oh. You all right, sweetheart? I'll be okay. So. So what happened to him? I guess it started when he lost that aerospace job. At first, it was just an occasional slap when things weren't going well, and only when he'd been drinking. Sweetheart, most men who lose their jobs don't automatically start beating up on their wives. Katie, you've got to understand that Fred was trained to be an engineer. He had a great career ahead of him. He had respect. He was doing the work that he loved. And then all of a sudden, he was just thrown out. You have no idea what that did to his ego. But what about another job in the aerospace industry? I think it's too late. He's bitter. <sighs> too many interviews. Disappointment and the anger and frustration of being told again and again that he's overqualified or... <sighs> he's been out of it too long, you know? Now he doesn't even go on interviews. Yeah, and he takes it out on you instead. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Only. 
only when he's drinking. When he's, when he's sober, he's, he's sweet and kind and loving. But that's no reason for you to go on taking this. I think I don't want to leave. I hate this. I hate him when he's like this. But... But what? How? I don't have a family. I don't have any job experience. I don't have any skills. I wouldn't know what to do, where to go. What? I, I don't know. You'd live like the rest of us. You try, you fail, you learn. You pick yourself up, you go on, you survive. Katie. I don't know how. Walk away from me. Kaz, friends are not for walking away from She's the one who has to make the first move if she wants this to stop. Kaz, it's been going on for three years. Of course she wants it to stop, but she can't stop it. I gotta do something to help her here. Darling, I do not stick my nose into other people's business unless I am asked professionally. Kaz, please, just talk to her. If a lawyer tells her to file a complaint, maybe she'll file a complaint. Yeah, and maybe he'll stop beating her and start beating on Kaz. Well, Lloyd, don't help me, okay? Just show some sympathy here. Darling, I don't even know your friend, and I feel sorry for her. Katie, husbands and wives have been beating on each other since the time of the caveman. It's like a play. Act one, everybody's kissy-kissy and lovey-lovey, then he hauls off and belts her, she hates his guts. Act two, he comes in with the flowers, they're kissy-kissy, he hits her again. Same as in act three. <laughs> what a philosopher. Would you like to hear act four, a little change of plot? Friend brings lawyer over to the house. Lawyer gets a broken joy. Also gets a lawsuit laid on him for interfering with domestic tranquility. I never realized that the two of you looked at the world through gross colored glasses. <laughs> now you are beyond all these little cases you keep dragging and you're not bringing any more. Sam, what am I supposed to do if somebody comes to me? They're in trouble, they don't have a nickel to their name. Well, you could refer him to another attorney. You do know that this office handles more than its share of pro bonos. I mean, we do literally give enough at the office. Kaz, you've just got to get the way the world works. You're right. No, no, no don't, don't interrupt me till I've finished. Don't agree with me till I've finished. Now, listen, there's a reason beyond what I've been saying. It has to do with your integrity and growth. I mean, you simply can't abandon a case you're committed to particularly when that case concerns an area that you're not familiar with. I mean, you can learn a great deal from the Hafner case, don't you see that? I do, and you're right. And I promise you I will not take another case unless it is assigned by you personally. Oh, that's great. Good. Sit down. All right. Now, so in the future, all cases will trickle down from above instead of seeping up from below. Filter from above as if from the heavens or seep up from the ground as if from the gutter. That's you. Yes, Miss Fogel? Uh, yes, he can take it. It's uh, Katie. Our next lecture will have to do with personal calls during business hours. Why don't you do that with her? Sweetheart, hi. I'm very busy now. Of course he did it again. What did you expect? I told you. Well, this time Betty's had enough. She's decided to file a complaint, so come on over now. Darling, I told you, I don't want any part of this. Kaz, come on, just for moral support. Look, you're the one who said that she had to make the first move. Well, she's ready to make it, but she's a very frightened woman. She needs all the help she can get. She does not need a lawyer. She needs a cop. She can file a complaint. With... I'm, I'm very busy now, sweetheart, okay? Let's, let's discuss this later. I promised you'd help her. Well, unpromise. I'm working here for a boss who pays me a rather munificent salary. It's my new word for today, munificent. I'll be through in a second. Yes, what? Kaz, look, I have never asked you for a favor before. Well, I'm asking now. I need your help. I'm depending on your help. Terrific. 67 Woolsey Avenue, apartment 203. 15 minutes. We'll be waiting for you. But only for moral support. My firm and I want no part of this case. Now, I'm putting my foot down, sweetheart. I'm serious. Hi, lady. You, uh, you do remember what I said prior to the call? Of course, lady. Sam, what time is it? Excuse me. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's 12.40. It's my lunch hour. Why don't I just pop over there for just for a second? I'll be back by the end of my lunch hour. I'm going as a guy, not as a lawyer. As God is my judge. 
Don't be too hard on him, sir. He's, he's trying. He's really trying. What will happen to my husband? Police will pick him up, book him, then there'll be a preliminary hearing, and the legal process will have started. Do I have to be there? Sure. You're the plaintiff. Look, I know this is an impossibly difficult situation, but it's the only way to get him to stop. To protect yourself. Well, Kaz will be there with you. No. I mean, there's, there's no reason for me to be there. Well, maybe I shouldn't then. What's all this? What's going on, Betty? McKenna from that female boarding school. What's, what's going on? That's right. This is Martin Kaczynski. He's an attorney. A lawyer? What for? Your wife is charging you with assault. What? She's charging you with assault. Hey, Betty. You out of your tree? Huh? Look at me. Look at me! Fred. Fred, you've got to stop. Hey, what's the matter with you? What do you think you're doing? I can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore, Fred. This is your idea, isn't it, McKenna? You never could mind your own business. Now get the hell out of here and take that shyster with you! Well, get out of here when the cops come. You just take it easy now, pal. Yeah? I will see about that. Where is it? Huh? Where's my gun? I hit it. Where are you going? You're gonna catch her with a gun here? You're not in enough trouble? I don't need to have my there he is, Rob. That's Fred Jackson. That's the guy you got to call about. That's his wife. And you keep your hands in sight and you back up against that wall, sir. Move. Who are you, ma'am? I'm a friend of Mrs. Jackson's. And you? I'm Mrs. Jackson's attorney. America spell relief. In Oregon for acid indigestion, we spell relief R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaid spells relief. In this test with Rolaid's active ingredient, laboratory acid changes color to prove Rolaid's consumes 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid. How does America spell relief? In Albuquerque for acid indigestion, we spell it R-O-L-A-I-D-S. All over America, Rolaid spells relief. It's a work of art. It really looks like you, honey. Not quite. I didn't draw your ring around the collar. You've got ring around the collar. Those dirty rings. You try spraying, even scrubbing with powders, and still you've got... Ring around the collar. Try whisk. Whisk sinks in and starts to clean before you start to wash, then gets your whole wash clean. It's a work of art. No more ring around the collar. <laughs> Use whisk around the collar for ring around the collar every time. Chrysler's Double Play Day. The 550 Protection Plan, no charge. And dealers can pass along big savings on options. You get double savings. On Chrysler LeBaron, Dodge Diplomat, Dodge Aspen, Plymouth Volari, and Dodge two-wheel drive domestic pickups, vans and wagons. Save $357 to $649 off the regular sticker. See your Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth dealer for details. Thursday, the Chisholms find new danger as the journey continues. Take me with you. Next, it's a special Kenny Rogers with Ray Charles, Dottie West, and the Oak Ridge Boys. Then on Barnaby Jones, gold and a fortune hunter threaten Barnaby's goddaughter. It all comes together on... Sam's not here, huh? No, he is. You don't happen to know which Sam wants, do you? Well, it can't be very important. Listen, why don't you tell him I'll be very happy to see him as soon as he's free. Matter of fact, I'm not free. 
Neither are you. We both get paid for our services. I think remember? I know what you're referring to, Sam. If you'll just give me a moment to explain, if you would be in that Would you explain apartment. to me what you're doing in a courtroom today at the side of a woman named Betty Jackson? That's just it. I'm going to be there, out of sight. Nothing more. Sam, the woman is too terrified to be there alone. Kaz, you and I have work to do. I'm going to be at the courthouse doing work on the Hafner thing, as a matter of fact. Why don't I just drop into Department 12 just for a couple of seconds? No involvement, I swear. And that'll be the end of it? Understood. Peter, that's obscene. Thanks, Sam. Look, Kaczynski, all I'm trying to tell you is a lot of these women invite this sort of behavior. Some of them may even enjoy it. You mean the way they enjoy rape? Look, all I'm trying to tell you is in all my years of prosecuting, I have seen very few husbands go to jail for wife. What do you think the reason for that is, Frank? Hey, look, I don't think there's anything lower than those guys. But the wives don't have to take it. Some of them obviously think they do. Well, all I know is if I beat my wife, she'd kill me. And I'd have it coming to me. Anyway, court is about to begin. No victim. You see what I mean? Do you know what happens to older gentlemen in the legal profession, Frank? They lose their eyesight. See? Frank, my client would like to have a word with his wife. No way. You want my advice? Don't do it. It's up to the lady. It's up to you. Well, can't I, uh... Just hear what he has to say. Damn. Honey, I just want you to know you were right to do this. Betty, I put you through so much. Maybe, I don't know, maybe this is the kind of jolt I need to get my head straight. Fred, I, I really think it's too late. Betty, Betty, I never wanted to hurt you. I hope you believe that. I, I just haven't been able to stop myself. But if you give me a chance... You promise. You always promise. I mean it this time, huh? I mean, things are really going to change. Now, listen. Something's finally come along. I've got an interview for an aerospace job. Really good one. Fred. Huh? Do you think you really have a chance? Court is now in session. Judge Cohen presiding. Go ahead. I've decided not to testify against my husband. Mm-hmm. It's like I said, Kaczynski. Very few husbands go to jail for wife beating. Mr. Kaczynski? Yo, please. Wait. Both of you. I want to apologize. It's okay. I'm sorry if we've taken up all of your time, but uh, I want to thank you both anyway. And look, it's worked out well after all. Well, good luck to you, all right? Thank you again. And uh, we're going to be all right now. I know it. It's a promise. Kate, don't be a stranger, huh? Betty still needs her old friends. Take care of yourself, sweetheart. She bought it. She actually believes him. Don't feel bad. You gave it a shot. Just stay away from those people like I told you before. What is that, orders, mein Fjord? Yeah. Don't be a busybody. <laughs> You do have one of the busiest <laughs> bodies I've ever seen. Can I buy your busy body some brunch? Say that fast, three times. <laughs> Can I buy your busy body some brunch? Very Can I buy your...
here. Now you run! Stop it! Shut up. Huh? I'm trying to really give you something to moan about. Just that you promise. Don't start, Kitty. Why is it always my fault? Tell me. Tell me. Why are you always blaming me? The end. Huh? The end of you. Just... You blame me for it's the not interview. My fault. It's not my fault. You hear me? Huh? Huh? <laughs> What's the matter, baby? You don't be around your husband. Huh? Stop. <laughs> you stay right here. I can get another drink. I'll be right back. We finish this. You did a fine job on this Hafner brief. Oh, boy, thank you. Really moves along there, doesn't it? <laughs> Only thing is, it doesn't have a predicate. Say, sure. I'll have it for your first thing. First thing when? Next week. How about yesterday? You know, we do it in court. Yes, Miss Fogel. Right. All right, I'll tell him. Kaz, that woman whose husband was beating her, Betty Jackson? Yes, sir. She just shot him to death. Oh, my God. He'd been drinking, and uh, he was getting ready to beat me again. How do you know that? Well, that's what he always did. He. Uh, drink and then he'd get more and more angry. I just couldn't take it anymore. The hurt. I was so afraid of the hurt and of his fists. Do you have any idea what it's like to always be afraid? Yes. Was he hitting you at the moment you shot him? Well, how much time elapsed between when he was hitting you and when you actually shot him? Two hours. Two hours? All right, you better tell me exactly what happened, okay? Well, uh, he beat me and then he kept drinking and he was building up into an even bigger rage. He kept coming in and threatening me with worse to come. And I, uh, I grew more frightened, terrified, waiting. It's the waiting, you know. Uh, and then it grew quiet. And I knew that he'd be coming for me again soon. I don't, I don't even remember getting the gun. Uh, it was just in my hands. And he was sitting in that chair. The TV was on, and he kept drinking, building up his rage, his anger at the world and at me and, and at himself. And I knew that he was going to kill me. So I, I lifted the gun, and I... Betty. Betty, listen to me. I don't want you to repeat anything of what you just said to me to anybody unless there's an attorney present. Wait a minute. I mean, you're not gonna... Please. There's a problem. But what's important now is, number one, to be very honest with you, it's going to be very difficult to claim self-defense. Number two, Betty, you might go away for a very, very long time. Couldn't be worse than it. 
already been. Do you know that feeling when you see a picture of yourself from 10 years ago and you think, I look better today than I did then? Many women share a secret that helps them look better at any age. Oil of Olay. It vanishes into your skin, soothes dryness, helps you look your best. No matter what your age. Oil of Olay. It can help you look younger too. Baskets with Tigger, Eeyore, or a cuddly Winnie the Pooh. Just $8.99. Other baskets at other prices, too. Only at Sears. Ooh, and his friends in the Sears candy store. You're probably still asleep when I'm out exercising these thoroughbreds. My morning goes so fast, I can't always take time for a regular breakfast. But I have a good one. Carnation Instant Breakfast. Mixed with milk, it gives me all the nutrition of this bacon and egg meal in just seconds. In a hurry? Don't worry. With Carnation Instant Breakfast, you can always have a good breakfast. Kev will continue. Saturday, 50 of America's Outstanding Seniors are stepping out to salute achievement and talent. Hal Linden hosts America's Junior Miss Pageant. There's only one winner, and maybe you know her. Then it's Dick Van Dyke, Bob Newhart, and Gene Stapleton. Can a town quit smoking? 25 million says they can't in cold turkey following America's Junior Miss Pageant. This is CBS. Welcome to Sotheby's. I have several bids here, starting at 140. Dennis Foley is an authority on rare wines. He has held the record for the highest price ever paid at auction for a single bottle of wine. Mr. Foley. We asked him to comment on Taylor California Cellar Chablis. I like it better than the other California Chablis that I've tasted because it's crisper and more full body. I think this is an example of California winemaking at its best. Taylor California Cellars, a better Chablis. Try it and judge for yourself. Channel 2 celebrates parenting. Told you now. Filtering and seeping. Filtering and seeping. No, I can't Got spare it. you on this half the case. You've been with me since the beginning. Don't worry about Betty Jackson. The court will assign her a public defender. Sam, you should have seen her. She's pathetic. Well, why don't you tell me Revco's not going to go for anything stronger than manslaughter anyway? So let me run around the corner to the arraignment. It'll just take a second. I'll run it through with Frank. Katie's there. I'll tell her personally to assign another attorney. Uh, All right, okay. Go, go. No, but I expect you back here in half an hour in the Five. Courtroom. Five minutes. I promise. Ten. Make it ten. Five. What? Hey, Frank, first degree? Come on, what are you out of your mind? Come on yourself, Kaczynski. She had a motive, she thought about it for a couple of hours, and pow! It was premeditated and deliberate. Look, I'm sorry for the lady, but you don't go around murdering your husband. You get a divorce, you leave him. She should have come to us. Department 12 is now in session. Judge Cohen presiding. Cass, please, will you take this case? People versus Jackson. Is the defendant present? Is the defendant present? Yes. Do you have an attorney? Um... No. Can you afford an attorney? No. All right. The court will appoint a public defender. <clears throat> Your Honor, may I raise a point here? You may proceed, Mr. Kaczynski. The appointment of a public defender could be potentially damaging to the state's case. Uh, Your Honor, the people are very appreciative of how might it be damaging. Conflict of interest, Your Honor. Okay, you got me hooked. 
by what flight of your rather bizarre imagination did you arrive at conflict of interest? If the court recalls, the defendant's late husband, Mr. Jackson, was to appear before this bench to answer a complaint filed by Mrs. Jackson. Oh. I'll give you that one. Well, at the time, Mr. Jackson was to be represented by an attorney from the public defender's office. Now, if Mrs. Jackson is to be represented by an attorney from the public defender's office, it would be a clear case of... Conflict of interest. <laughs> Excuse me. Not a clear case, Mr. Kaczynski. A bit Byzantine, perhaps. However, I think you may have in mind something that would save the day. I have something in mind. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the court appointing you to represent Mrs. Jackson. That's an interesting idea, but... All right, Mr. Kaczynski. The court appoints you to represent the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. And since you have such a deep interest in this case, Mr. Kaczynski, I would assume that you would wish to go pro bono. You mean donate my services? I would have a very difficult time bringing that particular concept to my office, sir. Ben. Oh, I, I, I understand. You would want the county to pick up the tab. Well, far be it for me to make those sort of demands on... All right, Mr. Kaczynski, you win. I do? Mm-hmm. May I make a further request of the court? Of course. May the court please appoint two psychiatric experts? Request granted. But how could I say no to Judge Cohen? Come on, you know the man, you know my history with him. Why not? You do it all the time when I don't want you to. What, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm stuck on the Hafner case alone? No, Peter can help you. I just briefed him. Oh, how did this office get involved in this case? Now look. No, all right, no one, no one has the time to help it. Do you understand? Is that understood? Yes, sir. It is understood. What's that? What have you got there? Excuse me? The, the envelope. What do you got in there? It's nothing. It's some stuff I'm um, working on for Betty Jackson. I'm alone on this. Yeah, but I, I'm not I, taking up any of your time. You just told me. May I see those? I mean, those pictures? Those are pictures, right? May I see them? I mean, I work here. Come on, let me just... The first three were taken when uh, she was booked. The last three were taken three weeks ago when she was hospitalized. You realize how terrified a woman would have to be to put up a treatment like that? Yes, sir. But this woman had nowhere to go. She had no one to turn to. She doesn't have a family? Not a soul. How could she go on taking it like that? Finally, she didn't. You, uh... Have any idea why she waited so long after the meeting? No, sir. And in speaking to her, she has no idea either. Well, the question is, with a, with a two-hour gap between the beating and the shooting, how do we attack the charge of premeditation? Good night, Sam. Well? Hmm? Judge Palermo. I love it. Isn't he supposed to be a little, uh... <laughs> no! Rough, bad. Isn't uh, Palermo supposed to be very tough? He's only bad if you think a strict constructionist is bad. In an era of permissiveness, I... Frank, when will I file for an affidavit of prejudice? We'll move the case to another court, all fine, right? Fine, fine, go ahead, but you can only do it once. Remember, that's Well, just... I can't do worse than this dude Palamo, right? Yeah, you could get Judge Stander. Well, I can't. Stander's busy. He's, he's on that land fraud thing. Wrong. The defendants changed their plea. They threw themselves in the mercy of the court. Foster and Cohen are free. Uh, listen, Kaczynski, take my word for it. You do me a favor. Just be happy with what you got. Frank, you know what happens to older gentlemen of song? They get bitter and they lose their hair. I forgot to tell him. Uh, Judge Foster broke his leg. He's in the hospital. And, and Judge Cohen is leaving tomorrow for a convention in Pittsburgh. So you suckered yourself and ended up with Judge Stander. 
Sam, I was taking a chance on getting Foster a cone. I judge Palermo is tough, but he is fair. I mean, your move was so tacky, sophomoric, dumb. Uh, dumb. I think dumb would do it, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, dumb. Sorry. All right. All right, so you bought yourself, Judge Stander. Now, don't, don't be upset when he gets to the cross-examination. What's he gonna do, question the witnesses? Your witnesses. Revco can take a nap for the entire trial. Well, you've started my day beautifully. Good morning, Sam. <laughs> Need that. Good morning. Mm. Sam, I need your help. How am I gonna defend this lady? I'm really lost. I thought this was the one you're gonna do on your own. Well, I am. I do have a couple of ideas. Mm-hmm. Diminished capacity? That was one of them. It's no good. Psychiatrist. They say she knew exactly what she was doing. Okay, different tack. She'd been beat many times before. Why shoot him this time? What went on during those particular two hours? As far as we know, she was semi-conscious after the last beating. So when, uh, when she came to, he was getting drunk again and, uh, and threatening her, right? Well, this is his pattern. Drinking, anger, then violence. So, so she knew he was coming after again soon. So when is there a threat? Only when you're being beaten? or when you know it's coming. Wait a minute, this is something new to me. So during those two hours, she reached breaking point. Now, Betty Jackson fired that gun to defend herself. That's your case. This is my case in front of Judge Stander? This is my case? We have no other choice. Oh, boy. Sam, can I share a private thought? I've been having over the past couple of months, even comes to me in dreams. Being a lawyer, it's very difficult. You, you noticed that? <laughs> I see. I did. Yes, sir. But I love it. Why didn't you tell Kaz about this? Betty, why? Shamed, I guess. Ashamed? Sweetheart, he was the one that beat you up and caused your baby to abort. Why are you ashamed? No, don't you see? I, I was ashamed for Fred. I don't want people to think about him that way. He didn't want me to lose the baby. Oh, didn't he? I don't know. Well, I'll tell Cass. I mean, he has to know. It's part of what happened. Katie, do you think that that's why I killed Fred? That I never forgave him? Oh, I don't know, honey. I mean, over all those years, it must have built up. It had to come out somewhere, somehow. Katie, I don't know that they should let me out on the street. I don't know. How can a jury know? Betty, you are not a crazy person. You are not going to hurt anybody. Sweetheart, trust me, in time, you will feel better about yourself. So for now, we just think about getting you acquitted. And we will. Who are you trying to convince? So what you're saying, Dr. Brody, is that a great many battered wives accept their beatings, sometimes for years, without question. Yes, exactly. Look, the first time that it occurs, they are surprised because it may just be an occasional thing. Then the pattern sets in. The frequency increases. So, gradually, some of these wives begin to question what has been happening to them. Is this really my lot in life? Do I really have to take this? And slowly, their anger and their resentment builds and builds. But always, sir, with the cover of fear, and insecurity? Yes, that is almost always present. So isn't it possible to say that the defendant's reaction after years and years of incessant beatings was a sort of delayed reaction, a sort of slow motion reaction? Can we possibly assume that? Definitely. Objection? Sustained. Come now, Dr. Brody, in psychiatry, is anything definite? Well, Your Honor, I certainly think there are certain... My certain... patience is about gone, Mr. Kaczynski. I can see that. Counsel, approach the bench. You are aware of the actual circumstances of Mr. Jackson's death? Yes, I am. Does counsel intend to refute the evidence as presented? Are you referring to the actual shooting? No, sir. Have you considered negotiating a plea in this case? I've discussed this with my client. She wishes me to continue as we have planned, and I agree with her. With the bench's permission, what I'm trying to do here is to show the uniqueness of this particular case. Your Honor, Your Honor, there is nothing unique about this case. 
I could cite countless cases to prove that. Battered wives who have killed their husbands and been convicted of manslaughter, second-degree murder, first-degree murder. Your Honor, what I'm trying to do here is bend the law a little. That's enough, Counselor. Court will recess for 15 minutes. The witness may step down. Counselors will join me in chambers. Thank you. Bend the law. I remind you, Mr. Kaczynski, this is not jaywalking, it's murder. And don't try to tell me she's any different from a hundred million other women. Well, I have to tell you that, sir. You see, that's how I'm basing my case. And it's been apparent for two days now that you haven't much of a case. Now, gentlemen, I'm a reasonable man. You're a reasonable man. So why continue to waste time? I suggest we dispose of this now, here. Fine with me, Your Honor. Excuse me, what do you have in mind? Now, look, it's obvious she killed him. It's obvious there was premeditation. Well, it may be obvious to you, sir. You're being impertinent, Counselor. I'm sorry. Not to mention unwise. Forgive me, please. I'm sorry. As I said, it's obvious there was premeditation. Now, I'm willing to give a little on deliberation, so if you'd care to plead murder, too, I'm sure Mr. Revko would have no objections. Well, uh, I'd be willing to discuss it, Your Honor. I appreciate your very generous offer, but I can't take it. I'm going for acquittal because I believe that's what my client deserves. Acquittal? Counselor, a life was taken. A human life. And in my view of the law, somebody pays dues for a life. I don't pick up a weapon and kill. You don't do it. He doesn't do it. They don't do it. But if they did, they must pay. And your client did it, Mr. Kaczynski. All right. Since you seem bent on wasting our time with this trial, let's get on with it. And I expect you to wrap it up by tomorrow. It's just not fair, the way he's jumping on you. Don't for everything blame you the say. judge. It's me. I can't find a handle on it. Yeah, but he's not giving you a chance. Neither is Ref. They're doing their job. They have the guns, not me. Well, it all comes down to your summation tomorrow, convincing the jury. Have you seen that jury? They're like an oil painting. Sam, the judge won't even let me get into the battered wife syndrome. What do you suggest? Well, in this case, the truth, Kaz. You know, sometimes there are no tricks and gimmicks or sly quick moves or legal maneuvers. A lawyer just has a simple set of facts to present and he has to present them with conviction. You may not have noticed, but I'm not exactly Clarence Darrow in front of a jury. No, but you're sincere in what you believe in. I use that, Kaz. That'll be your job, to get the jury to see it and feel it, live it the way Betty Jackson did that night. I'll try. When the weather's been bad and the kids can't play, when the pizza arrives and makes their day, let yourself go to Pizza Hut. Let yourself go to Pizza Hut. When you gotta have pizza all dripping with cheese. When you're laughing and smiling and shooting the breeze. Let yourself go to Pizza Hut. Let yourself go to Pizza Hut. Right, right back in there. Gordon Hall has a headache. I don't like the, the feeling that I get when I uh, have a pressure or tension headache. Is this the aspirin product that you normally take? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Are you familiar with Tylenol? Uh, only the name. And I see here it contains no aspirin. Will you try extra strength Tylenol? Okay. Compare the levels of medicine in the leading regular and extra ingredient pain relievers. Extra strength Tylenol has more medicine for your headache. The headache is entirely gone. What pain reliever would you choose the next time? I would go out and I would buy extra strength Tylenol predicated on what I have just seen. How do you feel about the rest of the uh, oh, afternoon and your evening now? Tonight? I'm ready to go. Extra strength Tylenol in tablets, capsules, and now available in new adult liquid. When used as directed, you get Tylenol safety, and you can't buy a more potent pain reliever without a prescription. It's our 17th anniversary tomorrow. I just went out and bought a nice card, and mm -hmm. combined with the uh, total alleviation of my headache, I feel like a new man.
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, eight years ago, Fred Jackson made a covenant, an agreement, with his wife, the defendant, Betty Jackson, to love, honor, and protect her. And she, in return, made a covenant with him to be a wife, a partner, and a mother to their children. Betty Jackson hey, kept her into the bar. All right. Take it easy. Betty Jackson kept up her end of the agreement. Betty Jackson was with child, their child. Fred Jackson beat that child to death when that child was inside her. And she will never be able to have children as long as she lives. And what did Betty Jackson do in response? And how did he respond? He beat her, and he beat her, beating after beating after beating after beating. How you doing there? Ladies and gentlemen, you and I and all of us have a covenant and agreement with our society that if we obey the laws of our society, our society will protect us. Who is to protect Betty Jackson? Ladies and gentlemen, the assistant, ladies and gentlemen, the assistant district attorney who is sitting in this courtroom today, Mr. Frank Refko, said to me, and I quote, if I beat my wife, she'd kill me and I deserve it. Objection. That's not proper argument, Counselor. The jury will ignore that last comment. Counselors will please approach the bench. Satisfy my curiosity, Mr. Revko. Did you make such a statement? Yes, I suppose I did, Your Honor, but off the record. I, I didn't mean it that way. Oh? No, no, Your Honor, I, I meant it in a moral sense, but this isn't morality, Kaczynski. This is law. If we let Mrs. Jackson go, we're telling women everywhere, if your husband beats you, it's okay to kill him. Now, what we're saying is that desperate people can be driven to desperate acts. That's enough, gentlemen. Proceed with your argument, Counselor. Thank you. And you, Mr. Revko, as a prosecutor, I suggest you think very carefully before making public statements like that one. Yes, sir. So, what was Betty Jackson to do? What would you do? Have you ever been beaten? You, ma'am, you ever been beaten? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then you know what happens. After a while, after the incessant pounding, you withdraw, you become numb. You surrender, you'll do anything to survive. And in this case, what Betty Jackson did blindly, instinctively, she fired a shot. Now, the prosecution has pointed out that it was two hours from the time she was beaten until she finally decided to defend herself. And what I'm saying to you is that it doesn't matter if it was two weeks or two months, that time is of no significance in this case. Because time for Betty Jackson in the past five years has been one long, endless blur of violence and terror. And she knew it was going to happen again. Because the pattern was going to repeat itself as it always has. She was going to be beaten again. So what was she to do? Did she want to kill her husband? No. She loved him. She wanted to live. She wanted what you and I would want under the circumstances, not to be beaten. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are charged here with judging this case and this case alone, the uniqueness of this case and this case alone. I am not advocating violence as an answer for anything, believe me, and nobody else in this court is. Ladies and gentlemen, I am asking you to judge a woman 
who had no recourses. She had no family. Obviously, she had no husband to go to. Society had failed her. As you now know, she had no children to go to. What did she go to? She went to herself. She didn't want to be killed. That's called self-defense. Oh, Katie, I shouldn't be here. I'm not in the mood for this. Oh, and you've got to take the first step sometime. They want to help. Come on, it'll do you good to see old friends. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. I feel strange and scared. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do I do now, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess I sort of am the resident expert on new beginnings here. You take one step after the other. Listen, I'm not going to lecture you. It is scary. But if you go real fast, I'll buy you a drink when you get to the table. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm really grateful to all of you. Thanks. Okay. Go. Come on, Sam. Uh, look, I don't, I don't really feel like celebrating. You two go ahead. Well, we won. Come on. Well, yeah, you won. You won the case. You kept your client out of jail, and you should be congratulated on that. But, you know, we must remember that a human being is dead. And people are going to hear about this verdict. They're going to think they can go out and shoot somebody any time they get beaten. They won't understand that this is a very special case. The precedent goes the other way. But Kaz built his whole defense on the fact that this is a special case. And you're always saying, don't judge your clients, defend them, also get money from them? I know. Well, I'm not saying anything different now. I just, well, I don't see a winner in this case. You're right. Look, don't let me spoil your fun. You oh. two go ahead and have a good time, and I'll Terrific. see you later. Sam, you want to wait a minute, please? I think I better go with the boys. I think so. love this price. At Albertsons, our managers do more than watch over their departments. They watch over the prices, too. Well, that's a nice job. That's a nice deal. So even the tightest budget has room for Albertsons' special kind of quality. And that's a nice deal all around. It's Joe Albertsons Supermarket but. Saturday, there's trouble for Coach Buttermaker when he tries to enforce a shower rule on the Bad News Bears. Next, Billy and Arthur discover they're romancing the same girl on Billy. Then a human embryo transplant causes problems for the natural parents and the carrier on the seeding of Sarah Burns, the CBS Saturday Night Movie.